Hey guys, this is Violet Ronso once again with another Bard video. Um, this part here, I have, what I've done today basically is I've run around many of the scenes that I usually go to to, uh, to farm stuff. I went to a siege, I went to the Tartarus zombie room, I went in the Tartarus maze, I went to the twin demons, and I also went to the obsidian panopticon. Uh, so a bit of all around of what a normal day for Violet Ronso is. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you my skill trees uh, for the skills that I actually use. As well as my decks before I sw switch out to the, uh, the other video parts uh, that I'm just going to add to the end of this section. So first things first, you've got my bar tree. Uh, so the important skills I use in the bard tree as a solo bard are Melody of Mending, Atonal Area, which is at 150, Melody of Mending is at 112, it's been training, it gained 7 levels during these tests. I also use Psalms of Stagnation, Psalms of Stagnation is at 137, uh, simply because at 137 it hits negative 100% move speed at six stacks which does absolutely nothing special so for anyone thinking hey why not get that negative 100 percent don't bother leaving psalms of stagnation at 120 if you have six stacks is more than enough and then you have refrain of resistance at level 120 i like it a lot because of the magic resistance and the damage resistance you get from it allows me to tank just that bit more <clears throat> I also use the heavy armor tree. As you can see, my passives are around 100. My skills are around 40 to 50. So nothing really special here. Uh, you can clearly outclass everything I have here in a matter of minutes. My shield tree, I use deflect at level 93, bolster balance at level 94, and then the passives here, which are all around level 100. And then you have my Earth Tree, which is, uh, you've got Sympathy of Stone and Bulwark of Earth that are above 100, both of them, but everything else is at 80. I put the Earth spec at 80 and all the other skills at 80. And then we have Defensive Stance at 97. We also have Spellbinder Stance, which I'm pushing a bit further, and we have Mind Lock currently at level 132. Level 132 here gives us a cooldown of 2 seconds, which allows us to spam Mind Lock quite a bit. At level 140, your Mind Lock falls to a 0 second cooldown, which means you can just spam it over and over again. So it's a nice uh, cap for this skill. As for the decks, we have uh, I use 4 different decks here. So we have this first one here, which is the Heavy Buff Start. This one has Spellbinder Stance, Strength of Earth, Shield of Crystal. Uh, Shield of Ice was here simply because I wanted to test the spell critical damage at another moment. Uh, you could use something like Purify or another long duration buff here, such as uh, Celestial Blessing uh, or Douse. You then have Defensive Stance. And then this section here is almost always going to be the same. You have my Mind Lock, and then you have a dynamic stack of a Tonal Area, a dynamic stack of Melody Amending, a dynamic stack of Refrain of Resistance, and then all three songs that can appear here so that I can stack them over. In my deck number two, we simply have the same five last slots, and then we have Torpor, Bolster Balance, Inner Strength, Earth's Embrace, and Healing Grace. These are some defensive buffs for myself. You also have my main deck. So this is the one that I usually walk around with. You have Charge from the Shield Tree. I use Charge rather than Body Slam simply because Body Slam is going to tank my armor durability effectiveness for 10 seconds. And I usually use this deck as a tank against multiple opponents. I don't want them shredding through my armor, so I do not use Body Slam. I'm not using the skill for the stun. I'm actually just using Charge to uh, zip around from enemy to enemy when I can. 
Uh, I have Knight's Grace here to remove the stuns, bleeds, and slows. I have Glancing Blow, which gives me quite a bit of defense, and I have Deflect. Deflect is probably my favorite skill here, simply because shields block insane amounts of damage. They block arrows, they block spells, they block physical attacks. You want Deflect on your skill bar. And then Healing Touch for just a bit of extra healing. We also have here a deck that I have tried during the Siege and the Tartarus run. It's simply my basic deck in which I added Spellbinder Stance to cast Stone Arrow and Earthquake a few times. I do not have enough attunement, I do not have the right wand on QA, so this was really not as effective as it can be. Uh, and you can use other types of spells. If you're light armor bard, you could use air spells. You could also use water spells. You could use fire. Uh, basically, as a bard, you can add everything to your arsenal. So I, I was just using earth here because I specced in earth. <clears throat> and then this last deck here, uh, which was only for the Tartar zombie room. Uh, these slots here are nothing. They're basically just skills I was training. Uh, and the main difference is that I put Psalms of Stagnation instead of Refrain of Resistance to slow the zombies down. So there we go. These are my decks. This is my skill tree. And then you have my armor. Uh, I am sitting at around 350 strength, around 90 decks, and around 100 or so intelligence. Uh, fully buffed up, I reach a bit over 200 health and almost 1000 focus. In terms of armor, I have a full set of Meteor Iron Plate armor uh, with as much strength as possible on it. I have a shield and a wand. I have the Fiona Fitzowen's loot or the Fleet Flute, depending on if I'm running around or just tanking. These rings are nothing. Uh, they don't really count. I do not use them. Uh, you have the Meteor Iron Heavy Belt, which gives me 27 strength. And then the Warlock's Chain and the uh, Kate with 38 strength. So this is my armor. Now let's head into the actual fights. Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, this is Violet Ronto once again with another Bard video. Today we are on QA version 1184. And we will be trying two or three things that I usually do as a Bard uh, with the recent Bard changes. So the important bar changes for this release, uh, for this patch at least, are the fact that 1. Atonal Area's damage has been reduced. At my levels, uh, the, the stats that I've noticed is that I have lost 40% of my minimum damage on Atonal Area, and I've lost 25% on Atonal Area's max damage. Uh, this is uh, quite a big nerf, uh, but I think it makes sense with how a tonal area's damage uh, was. And this will balance it out quite a bit, I think. Uh, so that's the first big change. The second one, which doesn't really affect me, is that Savage Sonata is now uh, tied with a tonal area and Mesmerizing Melody in terms of execution time. So it is now a 9.2 seconds cast time at my level instead of the usual 1.8 seconds. So this will affect more the physical players uh, rather than the mages or the bards. This is not a huge deal for me. <clears throat> and then the next big change to the bard tree is that now cast time modifiers such as Spellbinder Stance, Chaotic Feedback, and Shield of the Wicked King, uh, those now all affect your cast time for the songs. So if you take a look at Tonal Area right now is at 9.2 seconds execution time and if I cast Spellbinder Stance, my Spellbinder Stance goes down to a negative 0.3 cast time multiplier. And now my Tonal Area uh, takes 7.6 seconds to cast instead of the usual 9.2. My Melody of Mending is down to 1.5 second execution time. Uh, so this will help me cast things a bit faster. So this is really cool. Now I will be doing two different tests. I'm going to try to clear things out with the usual decks I use. So I won't go into anything fancy right away. But I've also created a new deck, which I'm going to show you here. 
which I have added earth spells to the mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out Spellbinder Stance, cast my songs, my Atonal Area, Melody of Mending, Refrain of Resistance, Mind Lock them once I've stacked them back up, and then I'm going to start spamming Stone Arrow and Earthquake to the mobs around me. Now this is a way for me to compensate some of the uh, some of the damage loss from a tonal area, but also it's just a way to have me be a bit more active during my gameplay. Will this work everywhere? I do not think so. I think in a scene like uh, Sieges where it's a lot of archers, this might be a pain more than anything else because they're going to run away from me. Uh, but we're still going to try it a little bit. Uh, there is also the uh, the possibility of going for Concussive Canical. Uh, concussive Canical with my Spellbinder Stance goes down to a 4.3 second execution time, which is quite nice. The problem with Concussive Canical right now is that I have a very low focus deck. Uh, my armor is all Meteoric Iron. So to compensate this, you could use an Ashen Wand, you could use a bit of Flush Chin Gear in your uh, armor pieces instead of all of this uh, full plate. So those are two very good options. There's also food and buffs. For now, we're really just going to concentrate on uh, the heavy armor style uh, for, this, for this video at least. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to go right into it. So we're going to start off with our Forest Siege. So once again, what I do, I pop out Spellbinder Stance. I start stacking things. I'm going to move my uh, combat bar all the way to the top. I like to have the combat bar all the way at the top because it allows me to keep the uh, combat in my peripheral vert vision. When I'm looking up here, I still see very well down here. Meanwhile, when I'm looking down here... Uh, the upper part is a bit less obvious to look at. So that's how we're gonna, uh, that's why I position my combat bar up there. Now we could also use, use an elemental with us. Uh, I am not gonna use it for the basic, uh, camps for now. So we're gonna start our strength of earth. We're gonna max it out. So Strength of Earth brings us to 40 Strength Extra. We're then going to pop our Shield of Crystal. Shield of Crystal, which got a nice buff here. Uh, now at level 80 and level 80 spec, I get some Armor Effectiveness. It's a 25% bonus to Armor Effectiveness when I five stack, uh, 6 stack Shield of Crystal, which is very, very nice. Uh, let me check my other buffs. We can pop... Bolster Balance, we can pop Inner Strength, we can cast Earth's Embrace, which is going to give us some more damage resistance, and now all our stacks are, go are going off. So the biggest issue with Spellbinder Stance is that the discard timer is much, much faster compared to uh, when you do not have... Spellbinder's stance going. So my songs, instead of taking about 10 seconds to discard fully, they're going to take uh, 6 seconds to discard. And this means you have to pay a lot more attention, be a lot faster with your mind lock. Uh, mind lock reaches a 0 second cooldown at level 140. So it can be a goal for you to bring this up as high as possible. Uh, the highest being that level 140, if you want to. If you want it, so you can do that. So we're going to cast Torbor 2. Uh, it recovers some nice health. It gives you a lot of damage avoidance and everything. So we're going to bring that up a bit. And then uh, we can just go right here. Pop our Spellbinder Stance. And then Mind Lock and start casting our songs. Another buff uh, in QA right now is for Earth Shield. Its scaling went up. So instead of uh, being a flat amount of health plus one health every uh, skill level, it is now a flat amount of health plus two health per skill level. So it scales up quite a bit more now, which is actually nice. Brings me up to 2,000 health for now. Uh, that amount of health is not 
it is still a bit lower than what I'm aiming for with this set of armor, but we're going to go with this for now. So sieges are quite simple. I do not need to maintain my spellbinder stands all that much for now. We're just going to focus on uh, taking down the siege engineers, as usual. Oh, and a slit shot. That's nice. <coughs> so the damage is a little lower for Atonal Area, but it's not a huge deal in my opinion. Like I said at the beginning there, uh, <clears throat> this was a necessary nerf in my opinion. Atonal Area was way too strong. Uh, this amount of damage might actually be the sweet spot for it. I find that it's still doing just enough damage. I know I'm just in a siege here, which is not really the top tier content most would expect to, to be taking down right now. But I'm still trying it out because it's a fun scene. It's one of the scenes that I do actually go to from time to time. For the Shield of the Wicked King, the Catalyst Hoods, and the Shield of Attraction. All of those things are quite nice, usually. <clears throat> We're going to see if I get a Catalyst here. I did not check the, uh, the Siege Mapper, like I recommended in my other video. I just went in here blind, I took the first siege I found on the overworld map, and I attacked it. So we're gonna see, it might not be... It might not be a catalyst for this fight, it might just be a lich, but it's not a big problem. So since we're not really focusing on a tonal uh, on spellbinder stance right now, we're just gonna keep our uh, defensive stance up and our defensive buffs like deflect and glancing blow. Just use the stance that fits more with the actual scenario you're in. That's the best tip I can give you guys. So here's the second catapult down. I don't even know why I'm looting them, honestly. Uh, we're on QA, it's not going to help anything, so we're, we're going to skip the looting now. Next step, we're going to go and try the Twin Demons. That's a scene that I like to do. I like to try to get those uh, uh, the Heart of Rolls to try to make myself an Epic Warlocks chain. So for the siege here, everything's going fine. I don't see any issues with what I usually do. The two big ones might be uh, the Panopticon, which I will for sure try. And where else could I try? I'm trying to think right now of a good scene I usually go to. I'm a bit higher level than the norm. We could go to Tartarus, actually. Do just a few kills in the Tartarus maze. Oh, and uh, I need to do the zombie room. Yes. Do a quick little 15 minute zombie room. Might take me a bit more time now with these changes, but we're still gonna try it out. So, did we get a... Oh, yes. Nice. We've got a catalyst. We're gonna take care of this guy. Now this is where I think I'm going to try and use a Spellbinder Stance now. So we're going to pop our Spellbinder Stance. We're going to Mind Lock once again, cast our Atonal Area. We're then going to cast Melody of Mending. And then we're going to swap to our other deck with our Earth Spells and try that out. So here, and then just start spam casting. So 
So here we're going to refresh our defensive buffs because we cast way too fast for uh, for our Earth spell cooldowns. Get that back into here with our cooldowns. Brought back down. I might just want to find a way to reduce my uh, fizzle chance a bit if we try to do this on live, but I kind of like it. I haven't really paid attention correctly to uh, the damage that the earth spells were doing. But we can take a look at that afterwards. So this is just a short time lapse here of me doing the zombie poison room. I do not think you guys need to see the whole thing and just my random ch chattering about this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to suggest to you guys a few tips for this room. Now, as a pure bard, clearly this room takes a lot longer now than it did before. And a tonal's, a tonal area's damage is not quite as efficient for it. So what you might want to do is instead of using a heavy armor set, you could either use a, uh, a pet here. One of the nightmares or unicorns would be a great idea. You sit him at the entrance of the room. Uh, you ask him to stay there and he just shoots out the, its cone attacks. So that can be one way. The other ways that I feel like you could add to your arsenal here is either one of the two big AoE, so either Ring of Fire or Meteor Shower. You can simply remove Melody of Mending from the deck that I am currently using and stack one of those two spells instead. You could also add Fireball to one of your slots to simply throw in some random Fireballs from time to time, as well as either Banish Undead or Solar Flare, which will do increased damage to Undead. So that's it. It's really just walking around them, letting them die slowly, using as many tools as you want to. Uh, as a pure bard, this is much, much slower. I'd say about 30 to 35% slower than it used to be. So I do not recommend doing this as a pure bard unless you do not mind that lost effectiveness. So I'll let you guys do a bit of music for the rest of this bit and we'll catch each other when we are done clearing the room. There we go. So everything's down. Not too bad. Not too bad. We're going to check the timer. We're going to actually uh, update that during the time lapse. I'm going to tell you guys how fast I did this. Uh, and also my, uh, I, my suggestions.
I usually tend to repeat myself if I'm just going off talking as I go. So I think the time lapse option is going to be better. I might just upload this uh, unedited version as well afterwards. We'll see. Uh, so there we go. So that was the zombie room. I know we've got a zombie skin belt. Uh, and that seems about it. I think, I don't know if the supply bundle goes, the supply bundle comes from here, but we've at least got one belt of the zombie skin. So not too bad for this little run. So we're going to head over now to the maze entrance. Kind of easy, it's just right down here. And we're actually going to try this out. So we're going to stop right here, and we're going to go in there. Okay, so we're now at the, uh, we're now going to try the Tartarus uh, Maze. Sorry about that. Uh, so here we're going to take out the Water Elemental, uh, just for that extra bit of defenses. And we are going to use our, I think I'm going to use the Refrain of Resistance deck for here, at least for now. We'll see afterwards if we want to change anything. Uh, we might try both. Uh, we might try the Psalms deck as well. But at least for now, we're just going to hit up the Refrain of Resistance one and try things out. So we're going to stack our Strength of Earth again. As well as our Shield of Crystal. We did not need it for the zombie room. Uh, but we are going to be using it for the uh, for the maze here. So a bit of bolster balance for the million range critical hit damage and the stun resistance. Inner strength. Inner strength, you do not need to stack it. Uh, a single stack is more than enough. I, it doesn't really stack at all, so you do not need that. And then a glancing blow and deflect, and we're good to go. So we're not going to go do the uh, the tower up there. Uh, we're just going to fight off a bunch of them around here. Just a few kills. Try to get a big aggro going on. Just to see how things go when we fight these guys. Oh, I put a tonal area in the wrong spot. We're going to have to stack it again. This actually might be the place where we start using a bit of our Earth spell some more. So we're going to see these, uh, these archers, these assassins. I mean, in terms of sustainability, uh, this deck is doing quite a fine job with just one of them after us. We'll try to see if we can do it, if having a, two of them or more is going to do anything. And deflect is great in this area, uh, especially for the, uh, since there's a bunch of archers and mages, the shield blocks that incoming damage, which is always nice. I would la love to have my earth wand here, but at least... For the majority of this, everything seems to be going just fine. We're not having too many issues. Let's go back to our normal deck. We're just going to focus on pure bard. And basically, the, uh, the earth is just going to add some extra DPS if we need it. Here we go. So this is a nice spot. Usually, yeah, we've got three of them on us now. We're going to try to get one fight with the mage as well in here. Just being able to handle three at a time like this uh, 
and just face tanking them is always a good thing to, to be able to do. And I mean, my health isn't going down at all. But this set of armor already is pretty strong. And these guys don't bother, bother me at all. So we like it. Uh, so this place, we're just gonna, like I said, we're gonna try to find one or two warlocks. Just to see how much time and how much damage, how much time it takes us to kill them, but also how much damage that they can deal to us. That's gonna be the kind of test we're working on here for these guys. And then we're gonna head over to the Panopticon. I do not think uh, the majority of the other scenes I go to require these tests. I mean, we go to... Oh, no, you're right. I want to do the uh, the Twin Demons. So we're going to try the Twin Demons as well. But for now, three to four at the same time, no problems at all there. And these guys, I haven't, uh, we're going to have to check the mages, see if they cast uh, Torbid Torment, which I do not think they should, uh, but we're still going to make sure they do not. But if they don't, I mean, we could also use Chaotic Feedback here. Chaotic Feedback to cast their songs much, much faster. This is a place where you can use Concussive Canticle too, if they don't use uh, Torbid Torment. So it's a great idea. As you can see, oh, wait a second. Okay, that is new. That is new. Mobs are now protected by cover for the bard songs. I do not think they used to do that. So that, that's actually a good news. Okay, let's try to find us a warlock now. We do not care about the marksman. We really want a warlock one of those casters and there we go we've got two of them nice that's actually perfect <clears throat> three there we go so we're gonna know if uh how bad it is and i mean if they do cast torpid torment we are bound to see them do it so yeah, if I sit here, there we go. You can see that these guys are taking uh, cover protection from the atonal area. People have been mentioning that you can just sit around with atonal area and kill everything across walls. Well, not anymore, buddy. That's going away. Is that another one or no those are the same ones okay is my atonal area down oh yes it is okay i'm just i'm just doing a terrible job that's all there is to it right now but still survivability is still up there These guys are still taking some nice damage. So one down. Almost two down, there we go. And now we can sit on this guy and just taken down. So let's try to add a bit of uh, earth spells to the mix. See if I do any damage with it. Eee, doesn't seem like it. No, this guy is highly resistant to, to our magic. We do not have high attunement, so that kind of explains it. We 
but yeah, this is uh, this is going just fine. So I do not think Tartarus is a bad spot for pure bards. They do not cast uh, Torpid Torment, so you can use Concussive Canicle here without being scared of hurting yourself. So the only thing, the, the biggest thing here is that a tonal area is now something that you can take cover from. That is probably the biggest change I was not aware of yet. So happy to learn about that. Pretty sure I'm going to tell Estrom about this and he's going to be more than happy. There we go. Okay. So, time to head to Northwest Blackblade Foothills. So, I will see you guys when I am at those demons. Okay, so welcome back to all of you guys. Uh, you guys have probably just seen a quick little transition, if not even. Uh, I'm not good enough for that yet for editing. Uh, but we are now in the Northwest Blackblade Mountains uh, by the Twin Demons Room. We are going to stack our songs, buff ourselves up, and try this place out now with the new, uh, the new Bard songs. Stack everything up. Do we need anything? Yes, we are going to take our bolster balance, our inner strength. And some Earths and Brace. Oh no, oh, I lost my stacks. Okay, time to stack them back up. Our Spellbinder stand still up for a bit. And then we're just going to jump in there once we've uh, cast the Tonal Area. And let's go. Let's get into this. These guys are easy. Usually the wave I struggle with is the next one with the skeletons. It's been a lot easier since I'm heavy armor. But still, I'm always... Uh, I'm always nervous about that wave. Scared it might just take me down. Unexpectedly. So, as always, my tactic in this area is to stick around close to the archers. Uh, so I try to find one or two archers bundled up together. I ignore the warriors because these guys are just going to follow me around. So I just want to hit as many things as possible with a tonal area. That's really my goal when I'm in here. But as you can see, these guys are hurting me quite a bit. We're going to take our water elemental out just to be safe. And we might use a bit of cover soon. So yeah, I think... Never mind. These guys are running away from the cover. Make sure our deflect is up. We can drink some potions. We can heal ourselves a bit. Healing spec would be great. Honestly, I think healing spec is one of the, uh, the safer options out there. If you want to play a pure bard like this. Uh, it, it, it will help you. It's a good thing for group play, because when you're not doing anything uh, useful, you can just uh, heal your, your teammates or yourself. And when you're playing solo, well, I mean, if you die, uh, there was a big problem. You, you were doing something clearly wrong. <clears throat> so yeah, life spec is, is a very good option for... For a bard. Currently trying out Earth Spec. Earth Spec is fun to me. Uh, if I get enough attunement, it can boast a bit of extra damage, which is very nice. Uh, 
in the meantime, I mean, we're just sitting around these guys and... Just doing what we usually do. Nothing special. You can also use a bunch of consumables. So you've got the uh, the smelling salts for when they confuse you, for when they... I, I, actually, I'm not sure about confusion. I think that might just be purifying. Uh, but uh, if you get mesmerized or anything, you can use those smelling salts. Uh, you can use some poison potions uh, for when you, you get poisoned instead of having purify. You can use the healing potions when you need a bit of extra healing. So you could also just completely ignore the uh, the magical schools. Uh, you could ward against all of them, uh, which would also be a viable choice since you've got all these consumables that can do uh, their job in place instead of the other ones. But for now, we're not going to do that. We're not going to push too far. Uh, into the uh, weird things. We're just going to focus on doing some nice bard things and using the uh, available tools that are there for us. One thing I like about Earth spec is the armor effectiveness. It's only a 25% bonus, but I mean it's 25 bonus on top of the health, on top of the damage avoidance, and on top of the Earth attunement. So it's it, it's a four for one buff. So 25% uh, armor effectiveness. While if you compare it to heavy armor skills such as absorb impacts, no, never mind. Absorb impacts is quite low. But I know there are some nice ones like defensive stance here. I'm taking a lot of damage. And I'm not dealing any damage. Okay, so let's pay attention to our fight instead of our skills. Uh, but defensive stance brings it up to like 130, 150. But it's taking a whole stance option. And you can use defensive stance with... Uh, the actually now that I think about it I am not currently using defensive stance so I'm going to go cast that it's on my second deck here so quick defensive stance back to this deck these guys should be just about dead right yes they are So this fight is quite a bit longer than usual. Uh, usually I can deal with these guys the whole wave sitting in about 4 minutes. Now this one took me about 7 minutes. Oh, an uncommon heart of roll. Lucky us. If only this was on live. Uh, but there we go. So the twin demons, not too much problems doing them. Uh, it's a bit slower, but it's to be expected when your damage gets nerfed. Uh, I did not notice any Torbid Torment being cast on myself either, so once again, I am not sure demons are casting Torbid Torment, which I might actually bug report now. Uh, so the next step is just walking around in the Panopticon a little bit, seeing how we deal in there. So we're going to go do a 10 minute over there. I will meet you guys when I'm over there. Okay, so welcome back. We are now at the Obsidian Panopticon, so the newest scene uh, on the lands of Misrender in Episode 2. Uh, so this time around, what I'm going to do... Now, I just realized that I do not have any food. That's surprising to me. I thought I had refilled my food stock. guess it didn't carry over to QA. Oh, well. Uh, so we're just going to use a bunch of the potions that we can usually use. Uh, we're not going to take this uh, with uh, the lower end possible. We're going to give ourselves a chance here. All our regen potions. Not sure if I want elemental or magic resistance. Life, death, sun and moon or fire, water, earth, air. I think the elven mages cast fire and air but also death and sun magic. <sighs> 
I think we're gonna go, let me check our wardings here. So I know I have, yeah, well, I have death warding, but I do not have fire warding. I do have fireproof up, up though. Uh, I mean, we're, we're gonna go with the magic resistance for this time around. A wolf speed potion. We're gonna bring our smelling salts over here just so that we can have them available. We're gonna summon our water elemental. This guy is always fun to have around. And then, uh, once again, pop our spellbinder stance. And then start stacking stuff up. Oops. Okay, there we go. So our stacks are up. We're going to cast our buffs. So we're going to go with Strength and Brace, Shield of Crystal. Cast Mind Log before changing decks. We're going to go with Bolster Balance, Inner Strength, Earth's and Brace, Mind Lock, and then Torpor. Once we're free from the knockback effect, we are going to go into our fourth deck. <clears throat> and then just cast a tonal area and stack it back up while we head over to the prison. So in the Panopticon, I'm going to avoid using Concussive Canicle at all times, simply because these Elven Mages are really annoying with their Torpid Torment. I don't want to... I mean, with this build, I could definitely use Concussive Canicle, and it wouldn't be a big deal. It could actually help me deal a bit extra more DPS, but for now, we're going to focus on just fighting them as usual. I'm testing how, how my live current build works compared to this QA, uh, these QA changes. That's the main thing I, I'm going for. Now, for those who also saw my video uh, combining Concussive Canicle to Torpid Torment uh, to kill that boar faster, uh, you can no longer do that, so that is not a viable option uh, when you are fighting anymore. Uh, Concussive Canicle here has started taking your focus instead of the mob's focus once again, which is a, a good fix, which means you cannot cast Torpid Torment on mobs to deal extra damage anymore. As you can see, these poison, this poison here, I, I, I'm going to look into uh, adding, no, I don't even, I do not even have cure poison potions. So we're going to ignore that for now. Don't want to add purify to my bar just yet, mainly because these guys aren't dealing enough damage for me to worry about it, but also because if I do, uh, my stacks are all gone. I guess I could just recast them, but oh well. There we go. So, this is good. Just one mage is easy enough. These black arachnids are not dealing merely enough damage to bother us. We're going to try to head over to the prison and try to get a few of them on us to see how that works out. Usually if I come over here, I can get quite a bunch of them on me. Now this cover feature. <laughs> Usually you could just roll around these walls and let these guys die through the walls. Now you can no longer do that. So you gotta, you have to tank them to deal damage to them. You've got no more choices. We're gonna use Refrain of Resistance as well. And I'm gonna make sure that my uh, defensive stance is up here because it's gonna be useful. Uh, there's no reason not to have defensive stance. And it is on the wrong deck. There we go, defensive stance. 
We're going to go back into this bar. We're going to cast a tonal area, stack it back up, and then we're going to cast Torpor. We can cast Torpor mid-fight as a bard, because, I mean, we don't care about being locked in position for a couple of seconds here. And the extra defense is kind of nice. But honestly, looking at this... Yeah, we're, we're doing just fine. Uh, honestly, our biggest issue now is the bigger targets. So mobs with uh, 15 to 30k health, those guys will not take as much damage as we need them to take. And their recovery might be too fast for us now. So clearly you're going to want to either have a friend, have a pet, or uh, just use other sources of damage if you are going to fight against uh, the basically the destroyers or any kind of, of boss the majority of them at least but yeah for most regular fights like this one we're not having nearly as much issues as I thought we would have using knight's grace every so often can also be a good choice uh, simply because Knight's Grace gives you plus 25% Heavy Armor Mastery, and Heavy Armor Mastery gives you some uh, Armor Effectiveness bonus. So as you can see here, my resistance is at 188.9. Uh, let's see, our Knight's Grace has already worn off, so if we cast Knight's Grace, our resistance should go up. Now it hasn't, that means that, oh, it's hidden here. I think I can't actually find it. That's defensive stance. That's glancing blow. Where the hell is Knight's Grace? Okay. We're gonna wait a little bit then. Ooh, wait. That was dangerous. I accidentally canceled my melody of mending. There we go. So we're going to cast Melody of Mending, try to heal ourselves up a bit, and then cast a Tonal Area. Ooh. There we go. So yeah, this this scene, if you're not paying attention, they, they, can, they can start dealing quite a bit of damage sometimes. We're going to use a Potion. We've healed ourselves up. We're going to use Refrain of Resistance. Try to give us a bit more chance. And make sure that we're hitting as many targets as possible while maintaining cover from those that are too far away. Okay, so we've got a fight with the big with the big guy here. Yeah, everything seems to be going quite fine. So our 10 minutes is almost up for this scene. So my verdict is really, for most fights, you're not going to notice that much of a difference. Yes, it's going a bit slower. Uh, of course, you're dealing less damage compared to before. But with at least with this specific build, you have so much sustain that you can just outlast them. The goal is not to kill them as fast as possible, but to simply outlast them as they are slowly uh, dying off. Which is basically the tactic many many other players will use oftentimes but in our case we're just sitting in their face and there we go so yeah so the the obsidian panopticon i mean we could go try the destroyers up top uh but uh like i said i do not really agree with that plan we need more damage if we want to deal with those guys but for the majority of the mobs here just a regular deck is working just fine uh, it's a bit slower, but it's still doing what it needs to do. All in all, I like the changes. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna be a big killing machine, the bard skills are maybe not as good as they were. But if you wanna be a a big tank that can apply damage at the same time, this is probably the way to go. So there you have it. This was my. Uh, QA update 1184 testing. 
with the bard skills. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day.